Hey, welcome back. This is Defender Chassis. My name's Scott, and this is the beginning of part two of the Helix 4 link install on a 70 Camaro. Where we left off was this bracket right here um, was pointed more in this direction. And what we wanted to do to make sure this, this arm was as long as possible was uh, we uh, trimmed part of that off so that uh, for one, this bracket would fit back in further because if you remember, the, um, the bracket was out beyond the frame rail and also to get this pointed in a more favorable direction. So that's what we've done and we got that tacked in. You may not be able to tell from the video uh, that I'm showing you right now, but we've went ahead and we've pulled all the leaf springs off, the traction bars, all that's gone. And we've got the, uh, the rear axle supported on some uh, pipe stands and they're adjustable. Uh, they've got a threaded section on them so I can, I can tilt this, this, uh, this rear end uh, however I want. We've got the lower links installed and what we've done is we've adjusted these pipe stands um, <clears throat> so that we're the same distance from the uh, frame rail to the top of the axle. So even though we're not on the chassis jig, which you know I've debated on whether uh, on a job like this whether I should actually have set this car down on the jig, on the chassis jig and and and, and fixtured everything, uh, the, the benefits of doing it on the lift where I can lift the car out of the way and and do some things uh, were uh, more beneficial in my mind. So that's what we've done, and the the, the car actually isn't setting uh, level from from left to right, but. Um, you know, with the adjustment that's in this suspension, we should be able to um, uh, account for that. And, and, and this axle is um, is level with the car, so therefore, really, we're just building this in a different plane than uh, than level, but shouldn't have a, an effect on the final product. So we got this bracket tacked on, and now we need to get these these uh, brackets on the other end. Now, if you remember right, this. Um, upper bar was about this long and so what I've done not knowing what length it needs to be is I've taken an off cut from the lower bars if you remember they were too long as well we cut those off and re-threaded them so I've got a short section of that lower bar and I threaded both both ends of it and created a, a link that is the what, what I'm going to need on this bottom side and we're just going to use this to uh, to fixture this up and what we'll do is take the real link after we're done and cut it to the right length based upon the center to center distance of this one. <clears throat> so that's what gets us to this point. Now, what I've done on this end is uh, we mocked this up and set this down and where we ended up was we were in a, a position like this because this bracket on the far side um, was, uh, was too wide. So, what we did was we leveled it up and then we scribed this back side to see what material needed to be removed and hit it with the grinder, clamped it to the bench, hit it with the grinder, removed that material, did the same thing to this bracket. This side didn't need nearly as much material removed, but basically now we've got this bolt for this joint in the same plane as the bolt on the bracket on the frame. So. Now we're all ready to, uh, to, well, to tack this thing together. And one thing that I did <clears throat> is I made a thin washer out of probably some 20 gauge sheet metal. And when I bolted this end together, I inserted that between this joint and this bracket. And what that does is that gives me a, the, puts these two tabs a little farther apart. And when, when this thing is final assembled, uh, what it'll mean is this will slide in a little easier. Uh, there's a tendency for when you weld this for uh, these tabs to pull and then what you end up with is is uh, the distance between the two tabs too tight to get that to get that joint in there. So anyway, that's what uh, that's what that's where we're at now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, break the welder out. We're going to tack these in several places enough to uh, to hold them uh, in position for welding. We'll go ahead and repeat all of this for the other side and when I get back with you uh, we'll either have the axle out 
and do the final welding on the brackets or I'll show you how we uh, thread, cut and thread these tubes. So be right back with you with the next step. All right, so let's go ahead and cut uh, these links uh, down. I've already done uh, one side. Uh, let me show you what we did here. Now, this is the, the rod end that comes with this kit. And uh, what I've done here is I've made a mark, and these are uh, three-quarter rod ends. So I've made a mark three-quarters of an inch from the, uh, the end. Now, this is the minimum amount of engagement that is acceptable uh, in, in, in one of these links. I went ahead and ran the jam nut all the way up, and what that gives us is from this jam nut to this minimum engagement line is effectively uh, how much adjustment that we have. So what we want to do is we want to create these links with uh, the, uh, the rod end being at uh, this position uh, to from, from, from zero, from the minute we start. And that way we can, if we need to make them longer, we can run them as far down the, the, to here. If we need to make them shorter, we can run them as far as here. <clears throat> so then what, uh, what we did was we went ahead and got them back in the car and got them set to the uh, to the proper length and then brought them back and notice I'm using a, a bolt here to line up this end and uh, once all that was together then we made a mark that corresponded with with this line so you can see actually this would have been somewhere in uh, this position and we've made a mark here to uh, correspond with how long this this length needs to be so I'm gonna make I'm going to cut this, and so that we get it square, I'm going to do it with a pipe cutter. So uh, let me move the camera over to the vise, and uh, you can see uh, how we how, how we do that. Be right back. Okay, so here we are. What we've got is a uh, rigid uh, number one dash two uh, pipe cutter. Cuts from uh, eighth inch to uh, inch and a quarter pipe, and uh, we just line the cutter up with the mark, and it's just as uh, simple as uh, you know making a turn. Tightening the handle till we make it all the way through. So there we go. Now it does pinch it down a little bit on the inside, but we're going to clear that uh, bore up and prep for uh, tapping that. Let me show you how we do that. Mm -hmm. 